and welcome to this week's Maternity and Midwifery Hour. This is the second episode of the second series of the Maternity and Midwifery Hour and we're going to be talking about breaking through despite the odds and I'm so thrilled we have the wonderful Dame Elizabeth Anion Wu and I hope I've pronounced that correctly Elizabeth. That's, that's not bad. Excellent. So, CBE and Dame of course as well. Um, and my name's Sue MacDonald. I'm the curator of the Maternity and Midwifery Festival and these hours. And these were really designed to provide some continuing professional development for midwives, for student midwives, other people within the maternity services. Um, and they're accessible now and in the future. So if you can't, if you didn't make it tonight on Wednesday and you're viewing this on Friday, that's quite normal and fine, actually, and share it with your friends. Um, and also, I want to say a huge thank you to Matflix, who do the, mat, the video streaming, and it's from mid, mid, Maternity Experts. And this is a fantastic resource for midwives and for student midwives to keep you up to date and get ready for your revalidation for those of you who are approaching that. And I'd like to say a big welcome back. It's been a busy summer. And um, with all of the problems, we've had the, all these youngsters going through all their O levels and A level stresses. And now we've got uh, issues with the, the young people starting universities and all the rise in um, COVID. And I, I will, all I'll say is that on the positive note, welcome to all the student midwives who start at university this week or last week and welcome also to the student midwives who are still on their programs it's fabulous that you're you're with us this evening i think you're going to really enjoy this evening a huge amount um, and we've got we usually have for these hours we usually have two speakers then we have an opportunity for questions this time we've got a bit of a treat because we've got one person in conversation with me and I'm, i hope she's going to talk mainly she's going to do a lot of talking and, and you're going to really enjoy what she has to say. She's very an interesting speaker. She's very challenging in some ways and a very positive person. Um, and I think that's going to be fantastic. And we're going, so this is Dame Elizabeth. She'll be sharing her early life, including she's going to really focus on her nurse and midwifery training. And I think in her other career with the sickle cell movement that she, she's, she's worked through, and her experience of bullying. So I think it's very apt for people who are listening because many of us will have experienced bullying in part of our lives and knowing how to deal with it and succeed despite that is really important. Now I was going to just start, we always start with a little moment of the week, but I think that Dame Elizabeth has going to start with a moment of maybe of the summer. Elizabeth, your moment, oh, your oh, moment. My, <laughs> oh, my moment. <laughs> my absolutely incredible moment that really took me out of the angst of lockdown and the depression surrounding worrying about my colleagues in respect to COVID-19 was being invited to be a guest on Desert Island Discs. Yeah. Mm. And... Um, I, the first task I was set was to take a delivery of a huge, so it was like a suitcase full of recording equipment, because of course I couldn't go to the BBC studios and sit with Lauren Laverne, the presenter. And so that was a little bit anxiety provoking. Did I get it all connected properly? But I did. Mm. And Lauren Laverne is the most wonderful person to have a conversation with, just like Sue, and um, put me at my ease. And I obviously thoroughly enjoyed the experience. I mean, what an honor. How many of us have thought about the tracks that we would choose if ever we were to do a Desert Island Discs. Mm. So yes, that, that was absolutely incredible, yeah. Fabulous, thank you. Now I would recommend any of any of you out there who like to listen to Desert Island Disc or even those who haven't ever listened to it, just go onto the BBC um, Listen Again tracks and go and listen to that recording because it's fantastic. And you get even more of Elizabeth 
on that show, but also some of her music, which is really interesting choice. Um, and it's a fantastic way of getting to know somebody and what makes them tick, I think. So thank you for sharing that moment. That's fantastic. Thanks. And, and I'd like just at this point, just to say really a message of solidarity for people who are out there who are caring for, supporting people who've had COVID. And also this uh, new, well, I don't know if it's new phenomenon, but this long COVID, mm. which is affecting a lot of people. I know I was listening, looking at the tweeting this, this morning and looking at one of the doctors was saying she had a whole number of colleagues who had long COVID who were very unwell and had been unwell for a long time. And so I want to sort of, raise that and just think about your colleagues who might be suffering from this long COVID, but also people who've been sick, people who've got people, other loved ones who are unwell, we're thinking about you and we're sending positive thoughts to you. And obviously another big thank you to the NHS workers who are looking after everybody and all the key workers who are making sure everything keeps going. As we're sort of entering, as we've got bigger numbers of people who are suffering from COVID, it's kind of feeling a bit awful for many people. So we're with you, we're with you. I also have got a little highlights. This is my highlights time. And I'd say tomorrow is the 1st of October. I can't believe it's the 1st of October. It's actually the start of the Black History Month. And it's really time to celebrate and honor the contribution that Black Britons have made throughout our history. And I, I'd like to see a bit more of the history personally, because I think that's a whole area that we, I don't think we know enough about. And I'm sure Elizabeth is going to talk about that a little bit and probably share a little tweet from this morning, because that made me smile too. It's also um, Neonatal Intensive Care Unit Awareness Day. So there's also been lots of stories about um, babies and families who've had the, the trauma of a baby in NICU. Um, and I think it's important also to remember those parents and what they're going through. And we're also thinking about the COVID restricted people in parts of the North, Northwest and Wales. And we send greetings and good wishes for you. If you have access to the new NHS COVID app, I'm sure you'll be using it. If you haven't, do try and download it onto the phone and get into using it and, and keying into wherever you're going. It, I understand there's probably about eight or nine million people who've downloaded it already. I think the more that we can download it, the more we can um, know what's happening, where it's happening. There's also a fantastic short course on supporting women's autonomy in childbirth from birthrights. And they've got places on the 6th of October. It's online, as many things are. They've also got places in November. So look out for that at Birthrights. And also for many of my midwifery colleagues in the UK, next week is the RCM conference. So that's another thing that we're going to keep busy with. OK, well, I'm going to scamper now onto the main event, which is Professor Dame Elizabeth Anionwu. I'm also, and I noticed the pronunciation, I hope I've got correct still, DBECB. -E. She is an Emeritus Professor of Nursing at the University of West London. She's also a qualified nurse, almost was a qualified midwife, also a health visitor, a health visitor tutor, health visitor tutor and she's had many senior roles, executive roles at various organisations, including, and I think that's one of the key things, being the first ever UK sickle cell thalassemia nurse counsellor. She was head of the Brent Sickle Cell and Thalassemia Information Screening Centre. She was senior lecturer in community genetic counselling at Institute of Child Health in UCL. She was dean of the School of Adult Nursing Studies and professor of nursing at University of West London. Um, she's had various uh, articles published in many journals. She was also the vice chairperson of the successful Mary Seacole Memorial Statue Appeal. And those of you who've been to St Thomas's will have seen that marvellous statue that's there. It's very heartwarming, fantastic to see. She's also now the patron of the Sickle Cell Society and the Nigerian Nurses Charitable Association of the UK. Oh, my goodness. Vice President of Unite Community Practitioners and Health Visitors Association. 
She was awarded at Damehood by the, in the Queen's 2017 New Year's Honours List for services to nursing and the Mary Seacole Statue Appeal. She was awarded a CB in 2001. She had a fellowship of the Royal College of Nursing in 2004, and she's also a fellow of the Queen's Nursing Institute in 2017. And very, fairly recently, she published her memoir, Mixed Blessings from a Cambridge Union, which is available in paper book or ebook via Amazon, which I think she might talk a little bit about in a moment. So welcome, Elizabeth. Thanks for watching this video from the Maternity and Midwifery Forum. For more expert opinion and analysis, hit the button below to subscribe.